good Hat and gloves at night I lie awake Wondering if I sleep Wondering if we'll meet out in the streets To take the sky away They don't move at all like a subway It's got bones when it's cold like any other place Sitting down and waiting for a ride Beneath the skyway Ooh, 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 I saw you walking down that little waterway With a place I catch my eye most every day And what a damn thing I could be And I say Up in the skyway Skyway Up in the sky That was pretty good, not too bad. Hey, I got a joke for you I heard the other day. I liked it. I heard it on the radio. And uh, it's about male contraceptive. They finally came up with one. And what happens, it's, it's a pill. And the next day after you take it, it changes. After, well, the day after you have sex, you take this pill. And it changes the man's blood type. <laughs> I liked it. And the woman on the radio station, one of the DJs, who heard this joke, she was like, I don't get it. I know you guys do, though. I do. And if you watch Maury Povich, <laughs> I'm sure you know it, you know. Uh, what else there can I say? Um, today is Sunday. It's August first 2010 and um, I don't know the song I just did was called Skyway by the replacements it's from their 1987 album called Please to Meet Me it was a, a really defining record for them in the 80s and it was it was a good album and I'd bought their album before actually from a reading a review in Rolling Stone magazine when you could actually open it up and Rolling Stone magazine's critics, music critics, were top notch. Nowadays, you know, they'll, they'll give a little Kim or some crappy hip hop artist or, you know, Toby Keith or something, you know, three and a half, four stars for an album that shit, no one's gonna even remember 20 years from now. And, uh, it's just absurd. Uh, Rolling Stone magazine is a, oh, I don't know, a cesspool for non-thinking <laughs> individuals. That's pretty harsh. But, uh, The Replacements, one of the best bands of the 80s, had they remained as a core group and kind of continued on, even if it would have been just only Paul Westerberg, who was the main songwriter of that band, had he just pursued it with that name, they would be, uh, uh they'd, they'd be a household name. Uh, they really would. And then in so many circles, I mean, probably you, who probably, uh, if you're over the age of 25, you've probably heard of The Replacements. Whether you've listened to their music or not, it's a different story. But when it comes to independent rock and roll, people who made uh, an impact without, like, huge commercial success, Replacements were one of them. And... Uh, I don't know, maybe if they reformed they could do it, but Paul Westerberg's way too true, way too genuine. You know, I say that and then they'll be uh, contemplating reuniting for their retirement, you know, funds. And, but I don't, I don't know, 
I'm babbling on, and I'm sure you don't want to hear it, but the, uh, I, I've got a lot of things to say when it comes to music, so I could bore you to tears, and I can probably see a few coming out right now. Yeah, let me, let me wipe that off. Here, can I wipe your tear? Got it, got it. Um, I don't know, what else can I talk about? There's really nothing else to say. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the song. It wasn't me. It was uh, Paul Westerberg. Like I said, pleased to meet me. It's got Can't Hardly Wait on there too, which is the last track on there, which was a, a movie uh, title for a film in the early mid-90s that started, that starred the wonderful uh, lovely Jennifer Love Hewitt, uh, who we all know and love, all men, uh, know that her boobs, uh, have a much better career than herself. Uh, <laughs> thumbs up to Jennifer Love Hewitt, except for that TV show called Ghost, uh, that is insanely fucking idiotic. Uh, sorry Jennifer, uh, I hope you'll still date me when I come out to Los Angeles next week. But, uh, ah, oh well, you know, you live and you lose. Okay. All right. Bye. Hello.